I'm Robin Moran from the New York Botanical Garden in the Bronx. I'm the curator of ferns and lycophytes at the garden. And in the last video clip, we took a look at an adiantum hybrid, a maidenhair hybrid that occurred near the old river station. And in this video clip, I'm going to show you a different hybrid. It involves the fern genus Lomeriopsis and the fa family Lomeriopsidaceae. First, let me show you the characteristics of the family. I have two plants here. And the characteristics of the family are that they have leaves that are once pinnate. Here's the stem right here, and all of this is a leaf. Let me show you this one, it's in a little better condition. All of this is a leaf, and the leaf is cut into separate individual pinny. And so we say the leaf is once pinnate, and that's a characteristic of this family, the Lomeriopsidaceae. And also, if we take a very close up look at the base of the pinny where it connects to the leaf midrib or rachis. There's actually a dark line, a line of abscission, and that characterizes the family. So those are the two features of the family. And this is the fern genus Lomeriopsis, and its uh, features are that it has a very distinctive rhizome cross section. The pattern of veins or vascular bundles in the rhizome cross section is distinctive. The ventral vascular bundle on the lower surface, the one that produces all the roots, is uh, elongated and it looks like a little smiley face in cross section and then there's several above it and um, that's distinctive about the plant. The other thing that's distinctive is that it's a climbing fern. It climbs up trees and in nature, and I'll show you this in a, in a minute, this fern is climbing up the stem of a small diameter tree and on the climbing portion, up, once it gets up to a certain height, it produces fertile leaves and I have a fertile leaf here Here's one of the fertile leaves. And what you see on this plant are old persistent rachises, or leaf midribs of the fertile leaves. Once they've shed their spores, they've served their function and they immediately uh, wilt and fall, the pinny fall away. And um, this kind of leaf dimorphy with the fertile leaf looking like a skeletonized version of the green photosynthetic leaf, that's characteristic of the fern genus Lomeriopsis. So those are the main features of the genus. And uh, just for comparison, let me show you this related fern. It's the fern genus Nephrolepis. It's the Boston fern genus. And this fern has a more typical sorrel arrangement for, of most ferns. The sori are in discrete dots. And um, here in Lomeriopsis, the sori, which are clusters of sporangia, they're just spread across the lower surface of the leaf. So the sporangia cover the entire lower surface. And the other thing about this Lomeriopsis is that the spores are green. They contain chlorophyll. They are, they are green. So those are the characteristics of the fern genus Lomeriopsis. Now we have two species here at La Selva. And let me get my other plants. First of all, the species I've been holding this is Lomeriopsis vestita, and it has a uh, small pinny. There's uh, many pinny pairs, and this species is strongly reduced at the base. And if we turn it over and look at the underside of the leaf, we, there's a green wing along the rachis or midrib, and that's characteristic of this species. And the other species that we have here, besides Lomeriopsis festida, is Lomeriopsis hopperensis. And here's Lomeriopsis hopperensis. It has a wider pinny, and the base of the pinny are actually quite different. The base of the pinny are more rounded or wedge-shaped. And that's distinctive of the species. And if we look at the lower surface of the leaf, there's no wing along the rachis or midrib. And that's how you can distinguish the species. There's another more subtle character in the rhizomes. The climbing portion of the rhizome, the, the stem, is covered by tiny black scales, and these scales are oppressed to the surface. They're flattened against the surface. I'm standing behind a cacao tree, which was uh, planted by Leslie Holdridge back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. And this tree is serving as a support tree for both species of Lomeriopsis here at La Selva. Down here, we have the juveniles uh, leaves, a juvenile plant 
of Lomeriopsis hoparensis. It's just starting to climb. It started around the base of the trunk and it's just starting to climb. And if we look up here, look at this rhizome coming up. It comes all the way up here. And then we get these normal adult leaves, which are more divided. So we have the simple entire leaves at the base and the once pinnate leaves up at the top. And that's Lomeriopsis hoparensis. By the way, here are some long roots that go down into the soil. And these roots are feeder roots. They supply all the water and mineral nutrients. And these shorter roots that you see here, they just extend out laterally. And apparently, they don't absorb much water or mineral nutrients. Their primary function is just anchoring that rhizome to the substrate, to the trunk of the tree. We also have over here, here's a juvenile. This is a juvenile plant of Lomeriopsis vestita. And you can see, unlike Lomeriopsis hoparensis, the juvenile leaves are once divided, once pinnate, at a very early stage. They have these separate free pinny. And there's that rachis wing that you can see. And it also occurs on the petiole or the leaf stalk. There's that very nice wing that's characteristic of this species. Now, the adult plant is over here on this part of the trunk. And you can see here's the long creeping rhizome. It's starting to climb. And here's the typical adult leaves with many pairs of pinny, those truncated or chopped off bases. And there's the rachis, rachis wing all the way along the rachis down into the petiole. That's characteristic of Lomeriopsis vestita. So both grow together and both are able to hybridize because they start around the bases of the tree, they're both able to have their gametophytes close together and the sperm from one of the gametophytes can swim to the egg of another gametophyte and you can have a cross fertilization between these two different species. And the result is a natural hybrid. Here we are with the plant Lomeriopsis ferrarii, the hybrid. You can see its rhizome climbing up the trunk here and here's its leaves. And we first noticed this plant when we were walking into the Arboretum here at La Selva because it's morphologically intermediate between its parents. And it might be a little bit subtle, but if you really know the parents well, this plant looks very unusual. Here's one of the parents, Lomeriopsis vestita, and here's the other parent, Lomeriopsis hoparensis. And I'll put them side by side, and I think you can see that the leaf of Lomeriopsis ferrarii, the hybrid which is in the middle, is intermediate between these two uh, parental species. We know of five plants of this hybrid at La Selva, and there may be more, and there may be other species here that hybridize, but we don't know. No one's looked for them, and there's a lot that remains to be done looking for hybrids and describing them here at La Selva and in the tropics in general. <music>